there's always an opportunity to be a better us for this world. So claim it! It's time to develop me for we. Happy morning everyone! I'm Steph Saison, your host. We usually hear people having this fear of failure, but there's also a fear of success. Both of these contribute to how we self-sabotage ourselves. So what are these fears? The fear of failure is when we have those certain thoughts and feelings where we won't ever reach success and our motivation to reach that particular success is way surpassed by that fear of not reaching it at all. So say you heard of this singing competition but you don't want to enter it at all because you're so overwhelmed by these thoughts and feelings that oh shucks what if I leave this event not winning at all and it's just an affirmation that oh I'm such a loser, I'm not really good at singing, I'm just a feeling superstar person. And I likewise had this fear of failure before I started this podcast. I was thinking, what if no one listens? What if the content I made when people do listen would be something they would ridicule? And I prayed so long and hard on it. And I really got to confirm that, okay, this might be my calling. This is my calling. And then when I started, it it fails. Maybe it's not. Maybe I was wrong. And this fear of success as well manifested. This fear of success is when we're afraid of what happens next once you reach that particular success. And you can see this as you have thoughts of, oh, how would I sustain this momentum, the expectations of people, or what would other people think of me and how would they treat me? So for this podcast, I was able to get over that fear of failure but right after that this fear of success was the one that made me hesitate as well because I was thinking okay what if it does go well what if people do listen and then they expect that I bring so much content but then maybe I start working and then I can't fulfill those expectations to bring out so much episodes that they would like or maybe people would see me as someone who's so conceited who thinks that she's so good and she has such great insights and they bash and mock me so we wonder where where did we get all these fears this fear of success fear of failure and i look deep within me and honestly all of us have these and sometimes we just really just mask and deny it but all of us deep inside, we all just want to be needed, recognized, and appreciated and knowing that what we do and who we are is valued. And we sometimes see that this, what we do, everything that we're doing is an extension of ourselves. We identify with what we can offer and that offering is something unique in comparison to others. Those who are particularly prone to these fears are those who have encountered a past experience where they failed, especially when that event was so traumatic and it brought out such traumatic consequences as well. Or maybe you're someone who has experienced several failures in different situations, or you're a perfectionist, or there's also this term called observational learning experience where you watch someone fail, that's why you got that fear. Or maybe even informational learning where you've read or heard someone do do something and then fail. That's why you got it. But letting these fears cripple you is self-sabotage. If you're used to doing this, giving way to fear, you're allowing yourself not to be present in your own life. So might as well say goodbye to your long-term goals since you don't want to pursue them anyway since you're always giving in to fear. Of course, we do need that healthy dose of fear to really affirm what we really want. And having those feelings and thoughts, yes, they're valid, but that doesn't mean you allow them to take over you. Letting fear take a hold of you can manifest in different ways. Yes, we have those usual feelings of being overwhelmed, paralyzed, or have indecisiveness carried out throughout the other things that you do and love. But there's also procrastination, which is really just denial and avoiding the inevitable when you need to make the decision. And there's also self-medication. 
And note that this is not necessarily through just medicines or drugs, but also through alcohol use and stress eating, self-injury, and throwing yourself in other important things. Since medication is defined as it's something meant to cure, halt, or even pre prevent that disease. And resorting to these means is a way to do those that medication defines. But they are just band-aid solutions, temporal fixes that honestly don't really fix your problem. They may even make it worse. So there's that need to really identify the root problem. There's no use in batting that fear itself when it's just the surface level manifestation of the real problem. So like take away the alcohol or take away the food, but that doesn't really solve anything because there is an underlying root problem that maybe okay, I won't go to alcohol and food, but I would do it in some other way because that fear is still there. So how do we do this? How do we get to identify the root problem? You really have to ask questions and be honest with yourself. As they say in those personality tests in the start, there's no use in lying and manipulating the answers so that you would get a desired result because that's not really the truth what's the point of taking a personality test if it's not gonna give you insight on yourself because it's all not truthful so how can we do this change starts from self-awareness when you're not really aware at all and that's personally why I like journaling because I can really track how I responded or reacted to a situation so I can really be able to physically see and track all those trends and patterns that I have, how I act, how I thought of these things, what I said, these feelings. It's so much easier to track all that and observe. But of course, I understand that journaling isn't something that everyone has time to do or not everyone enjoys doing it. So at least having someone like maybe a life coach, counselor, therapist, or a trusted and mature friend who can throw you questions and make you just sit down and recall certain situations can help you tinker into that mind of yours. And this is not a one-time thing to do, okay? Again, let's be intentional daily, weekly, monthly, as long as you commit to it. I'm personally comforted by the thought that amidst all these failures and successes, we aren't defined by what we do. My identity and purpose won't be changed by a mistake or another achievement. I go to the Bible to remind myself of my value and worth, even as an imperfect human being. There's so much affirmations that you can find here about who you are and the promises that you can hold on to. Like, wow, I'm a child of God. I'm loved. I'm cared for. He knows us so intimately that he desires a relationship with us. He's just there waiting for you to grab hold of him, to sit down and listen and to speak out. And he says that he knows the numbers of hairs on your head like who even who even knows how many you have and he has great plans for you for for your wonderful futures and that's just an affirmation that okay we can be kind and gracious to ourselves because god did so why shouldn't we to ourselves though some of you may not be christians or believers of god i encourage you all to Go on for your search of truth and the belief system where you ground your identity and purpose. Being intentional in doing this also helps us ensure that what we do as manifestations of who we are and what we believe in aren't just meaningless and directionless. As Zig Ziglar said, if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. And I personally got my clarity from this. It's what sustains me daily to be sane, whole, and grounded as a person. They're what guide me when I make my decisions, especially when confronted with fears such as these. And having this solid belief system will hold you as you walk through uncertainties with certainty. So I know that's a lot of things to reflect on and to observe, to really work on. So I'm just leaving you this kind of packed question for reflection. So ask yourself these questions and try to answer. Do I have a clear belief system that will help me understand my identity and purpose? Will this stand as certain even through uncertainties? 
I pray you all take the time to think through your answers to these critical questions. Don't forget that we all need to make the time to take the time. If you have questions, suggestions, or just want to chat, you can message me on Instagram at StephSaison or Twitter at WhatStephSaison or even email me at developmeforv at gmail.com. See you guys in a few days for the next episode. Happy morning!